So let's check uh, just first, and you don't have to do this first, but we're going to just for practice sake. Uh, in the domain, we have two values that x cannot be. Uh, for the x plus 3, if x were negative 3, then it would give us an undefined value. For the x minus 3, when x is a positive 3, because 3 minus 3 gives us 0, then it would have an undefined value on the right side of the equal sign. So those are the restrictions for x, which again, it, it may or may not be useful in the end. But it at least shows us that the, they can't be these two numbers. So let's go ahead and solve this one. You guys want common denominators or cross multiplication? Common denominators, all right. So if we do that, then we need to put these in parentheses. So on the left side of the equal sign, I've got x plus 3. And on the right side, I've got in the denominator x minus 3. So if I have both of those in both sides of the equation in the denominators, it will give me common denominators. Okay. So in other words, in this fraction, the denominator, if I multiply that by x minus 3, then of course I would have to multiply the numerator by x minus 3 as well. There we go. Now I have an x minus 3 that's common in both denominators. Of course it did change the numerator though. Now in the right side, we have an x minus 3. What we need now is an x plus 3. But if I do it to the denominator, I must do it to the numerator as well. Otherwise, it's going to change the final value of that fraction. Here now, we have common denominators. So if I were to rewrite this, I'd still have that. I'm going to start on the right, by the way. We've got this is 4 times the x plus 3. And I've got 6 times the x minus 3. So see how we got rid of the denominators there? Because they were the same. Well, this looks like uh, an equation that hopefully everyone's pretty used to at this point. Because I'm going to distribute the 6 and the 4. So I get 6x minus 18 equals 4x plus 12. And I'm going to put the x is on the left, so I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides and add 18 to both sides. And I've got uh, 2x equals 30. Now I'll just divide both sides by 2 and I find that x is 15. Some of you noticed, because you do prefer cross multiplication, if I cross multiplied these then I, I got that term right there. And if I cross multiply these, and I got that one, which which was kind of quick, right off the bat. But all right, the last thing we should do on this problem is to check. So I've got six over x is fifteen, and that would be plus three. This should equal four over fifteen minus three. So just working on the left side, I've got six over fifteen plus three is eighteen. Simplified gives me one-third. So these should be equal, right? And uh, now I've got 4 over 15 minus 3, which is 12. 4 divided by 12 is one-third. So this checks off. So when would the 3 and negative 3 come in? So yeah, in this part, in this problem, hopefully everyone sees that, what Magnum was just saying. The 3 and the negative 3 didn't really affect the answer, even though there are restrictions, right? Uh, but they would have if we would have checked and the answer was 3 or negative 3. So you don't have to address that in the beginning like we did on this problem. As long as you check. If you don't check, well, you're kind of taking a big risk there anyways. But when you check, it would come out. It would show you that you would have an undefined value on one side of, well, in one of the terms at least.